Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Build Your Copywriting Business Podcast. Hey there, Kate. Hello. Hello. Uh, Today, guys, we're going to talk about um, what you need to have for your professional copywriter home office. Um, And the reason we want to talk about this is because there are so many possibilities of what you could purchase. As someone who in the past uh, gets excited about new hobbies, new directions, and then immediately goes out and purchases all of the various uh, accoutrements to go with that hobby, whether or not I actually follow through on hobby. How's the roller skates doing? They're in the front hall closet. They've been worn twice. (laughs) They're really great roller skates. I was on a wait list to get them. They're so cute. And I was like, this is going to be great. My best friend, Melody, will take her girls out for walks in the neighborhood. The neighborhood is actually very hilly. It turned out to be very dangerous. (laughs) However, I have them if I go to a skating rink. Uh, So, yeah that and and many other things. I, we would like to help you avoid this when it comes to your copywriting career. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, is kind of the overarching answer to the question, but then we'll get more specific in terms of like what you need, what you don't need. So overarching answer to this question, Kate, what do you need for your professional copywriting home office? You need the internet. (laughs) Let's start with that. Um, That's, that's, if internet and your laptop or if you have a desktop if you're a desktop person i don't know if that's i, I think some people still have desktops okay. whatever your preferred computational device is mac pc doesn't matter um i know some people use you know a tablet of some kind like the the sl- that have keyboards i would i would i would personally struggle with that as a copywriter with writing and i, I definitely need a keyboard of some kind so mm-hmm. i use a laptop though mm-hmm. um and Honestly, I do a lot of, I do have a second monitor. You do not need one. Um, I do a lot of work just on the, and you just have a laptop, right? Mm -hmm. You don't even have a second monitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do not. No. Yeah. You need, you need the internet. Like you said, it has to be reliable internet. If you are, if your internet is consistently going in and out, how are you going to have calls with your clients? Right. Uh, Because your clients are, maybe they'll be, want to be on the phone sometimes, but probably a lot of times they'll want to be on Zoom on video Mm -hmm. calls and you do not want to have to do. I mean, it, it, sure. It happens to all of us, even with great internet connection. That's understood nowadays. However, if a client notices that's happening consistently with you, it looks really unprofessional. So you want to make sure that your your internet connection is good. If you need to call your internet provider and say, either you need to figure out how to upgrade me, or maybe you need to switch to a different internet internet provider, this is the time to start thinking about that. But yeah, you need a computer. It needs to be a reliable computer. You need some kind of automated backup for your mm-hmm. computer. Um, it needs to to back up to the cloud uh, or which is, you know, I don't need to define cloud for you guys. You know, just the, the repository that exists somewhere that keeps all your digital files. Um, but it's servers should, out in Arizona, servers somewhere. in Arizona, but it, uh, it, it should automatically back up because unfortunately uh, tech can fail. Um, computers can just one day decide that they're not going to turn on and you need to have access you to all of these things. You can spill wine on them and suddenly things you've worked on are gone. Hypothetically, Kate? Hypothetically, hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, they do not mm-hmm. make wine-proof computers and they really, That's... really should. Or did they get a new computer purchase out of you because they don't make <laughs> wine-proof computers? Just putting that out there. Mm-hmm. Um Yes, but and you need and you need um, some kind of word processing software, but that can be Google Docs. I actually I kind of use both both Word Docs and Google Docs. Depends on the project for me. For copywriting, I actually still tend to prefer um, Word Docs, but that that can be personal preference. If you're going to use a Google Doc, just make sure that you you don't have it set up so that your clients can see you in there working if they also have a link to the document. Or yeah. if you're making edits on feedback, I always make feedback. I make I copy. All of the copy from the, you know, so round one, I shared it with the client. Round Mm -hmm. two, I take all of their feedback. I copy that and I put it in my own working doc Mm -hmm. and I make edits Mm -hmm. in that one because I do not like to perform copy. I don't know about anyone else. No, No. and no one should have to. No. But beyond that, that's really what you need. And so we want you to make sure that you don't get caught up in this like, well, I also need this. I also, I always kind of think back to when I was first starting as a copywriter, like 
you know, 20 years ago. And there was some book that my mom had got me and which is still grateful for that book because it reminded me that copywriting was a thing and I could do it. Um, but in the book, it's like, you need a fax machine for your home office and which I never got a fax machine, but it was like, you need a dedicated landline for you. So I did, I had, I had a phone with a dedicated phone number to the, which I probably used twice. Um, but there's all kinds of things that you could purchase, but they're not necessary. Now, are there things you, our students know that when we talk about software, for example, make sure that the software is going to pay for itself and then some before you start investing it. Because it's very easy to, to start investing in software. And a lot of them have monthly payment program. And all of a sudden, at the end of the year, you can look at what you spend and go, oh my gosh, I've spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on software that I don't really use, or that isn't really making any kind of positive impact on my business. Or maybe it makes things a little bit easier, but it's costing me a grand in order to make things incrementally easier. So really think through any any software. You know, a few of the softwares that we're big fans of um, are Dubsado can be really great for sending out invoices, helping you with client tracking. Once you start working with clients regularly, if you're just getting started, you don't need it yet. And our students know we have all of the steps to to all of the all of the the steps, all of the excuse me, say software. It's not software. You don't need software. Mm-hmm. All of the tools that you need before you're ready for Dubsado. If you start working with clients regularly, like oh, I want a little bit more little bit more tech management, then you can look into it. We'll give you a link. It's, it could be terrific, but you don't need it yet. So, I still don't use it, quite frankly. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. <laughs> um, and terrific. we will link to the episode with all of our software recommendations oh, yes. in the show notes. So definitely check that out. Um, the mm-hmm. other one I do want to mention though, because it has a free version is Asana for project Ooh, management. Yes. It doesn't come with all the bells and whistles, but honestly, you don't need all the bells and whistles. And if you decide you start making some money and you want to test out, I think they have f- some free trials, to, you know, so you can try it out before you commit to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but check that, check out the free version. It, it's likely more than enough to keep track of everything that you've got going on, what tasks you've got going on, deadlines, all of that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it really, it, that's exactly what it is. Just if you have a couple of different projects going on with clients and you find you're starting to get a little bit hazy on what has to happen when, it can be just a great way to clarify it for you. So that's kind of within the computer and the internet. What do you need beyond that? You need a, you need a place to work, right? You need a place that it, but it does not have to be a dedicated space, right? I know some people are like, all right, I'm going to carve out a part of my basement and we're going to put up walls and it's going to be my office. If you can do that. Awesome. If you can't, Welcome to the club. I think most people can't. You know, I think most people end up working at their kitchen table, or maybe they work um, in a guest bedroom or their bedroom at certain times of the day. It's ideal if you have a lot of other people in the house to have something with a door. Um, I live alone, so I don't have a door to my office. That's okay, because if anybody is in my house. I want to know about it. We'll tell you. I'll let you know. Yes. Thank you. If you see anybody coming up behind me, please let me know. Um, but it's, it's ideal to, to, if you have other people in your house, it's ideal to have a door so that you can say, this is, this is the time when I'm working. Only open the door if, if there's blood or other type or other high level emergency kinds of things. But it also may be if you don't have a door, then they're just times of the day. The kitchen table, I work at the kitchen table before the kids are up in the morning. Or I work at the kitchen table while little Tommy is in preschool or, or however you need to structure that. But you do need a place where you can focus, where if you prefer silence, that you can either get silence or you can get, um, you can, you know, earplugs or, or noise canceling headphones. Um, those canceling headphones can be expensive though. So make sure you need them. Try the earplugs first. They're really, really cheap. Um, and they have some, some great ones. Um, but you, you just need a space that you can work in and actually get work done. However, that ends up being, you need a space and maybe that change, maybe that space changes at various times of the day. I would know we have students who do some kitchen table in the mornings and then at various times of the day, and it might, uh, might change too, depending on the type of work they're doing. You know, it might be they are, they're in the guest room in the morning while they're writing. And then in the evening, they move to the kitchen table while they're sending out invoices and that kind of thing, because they want to be there with their kids. Maybe the invoices don't require the, the same type of attention 
that I know that the invoices don't require the same type of attention that actually writing copy does. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, and even even for client meetings, it's nice to have a space where you can go and and take the video call or phone call as needed. I think a lot of clients, especially post pandemic, are very used to people working at home with families with children, and so you know if your kid pops up on the Zoom screen, depending on the client, I feel like most clients, if if you're working, if you're if you're a parent at home working and your client is mad at you for having your kid pop on the screen, then maybe that's not the client that you want to work with. Um, mm-hmm. And that could be a great, you know, great way to say, okay, great. This, this mm-hmm. relationship maybe isn't, isn't the right fit. Yeah. Which is not to say that you shouldn't try to avoid it. <laughs> Definitely try to avoid having pets, children pop up on screen yeah. to be very, very clear. But, but I agree. If, if it's like we were saying about zoom about how sometimes things will happen, things happen. And that might be one of the things that happen. Well, then something I think about too is, you know, I think some people think like, well, I need a professional background. Mm -hmm. I need something, I need stuff on the walls. And I mean, yes, I have, and you'll see it has changed a bit. Um, But that's because I'm on camera all the time and we are recording. So so I need something that's a little bit, could this be better? Absolutely. It could be better. Could my blur be better? (laughs) But that's my point, right? Is that it doesn't, you don't need to have some kind of beautiful, Mm -hmm. it's not beautiful, but some kind of curated background. Mm -hmm. If you need to, you can put on the zoom blur and that's perfectly fine. And that's, that's absolutely adequate. The zoom blur is better than, I don't know, like, laundry behind you or or things like that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, we are, we're working at home, but we still want to, to have as professional of of a semblance as not semblance because we are professional, but we want to come across as professional as we can. But that doesn't mean that we need to have an office background and we need to spend money on, on artwork for the back, or we need a sign that says our business name. If we have a business or anything like that, Mm -hmm. a blur is totally fine. And I think the same thing too, when it comes to, when it comes to lighting, I am on camera all the time. So I have my desk lamps and then I also have additional, um, additional lights to light up the space. But Kate, you're looking at a window. I'm looking at a window. And that's what I would recommend. Yeah. If you were, if, if you, when, when you're on camera and often for a while, I would just take my computer to a room that had the best lighting and sit in front of the window. So the light Mm -hmm. is coming onto me behind you. It gets really hard and you have that like, you know, flare ups Mm -hmm. and whatnot. But there's, there's, I think the, the only, again, professional, I've been on meetings where people are like, look like they're in, in their bed and it's like dim and dark and it, it comes across. It's not a good, it's not a professional look. And so I think mm-hmm. that's the key is if your lighting's not the greatest, it's not the end of the world, but do, do what you can face a window. And if you don't have windows, I've been in spaces that then, you know, maybe you do want to get a lamp that you can kind of shine, shine, you know, um, they sell them for like 20 bucks on Amazon, the little ring mm-hmm. lights that you can yep. put behind your laptop and, and mm-hmm. have a, a little bit more, be- mm-hmm. a little bit more lighting for your, for your video calls. But yeah, yeah, exactly. People need to be able to see you, but beyond that, you don't have to get, you don't have to get crazy. You don't have to get additional lighting. You don't have to just, people need to be able to see. It. And then along those same lines too, you need to look professional. You know, you, you, we're not saying you need to wear a suit, you need to have, but you need to wear what also too, it's only from the waist up. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing leggings right now. Um, <laughs> that's probably not something I wouldn't wear a shirt and leggings into an office, into a meeting, but you're only going to see me from the waist up and actually really just like, but practically just the shoulders up. Um, so wear a, wear a business casual shirt, whatever, whatever. Whoever you are, however you dress, maybe you're a little bit funkier, that's fine, but it shouldn't look like you just rolled out of bed. I have done, I've had interviews with, um, with people who wanted to be virtual assistants for a company and absolutely a couple of the people that I talked with were wearing pajamas and not just like casual clothes. Like I know that these are pajamas and guess what? That's fine if you're wearing pajamas while you're doing the work for me, for us. Totally. I don't care what you wear. But when you're showing up on a call with me, I want you to show up at your best. And I think that that's what we all expect from professional. It's, it's just a half hour call with me. Show up at your best. You know, it's, you're just, you're going to get a, and we're not saying you need to, you need to invest in all kinds of expensive clothing and you need to, oh, you need to get your hair done. You need to do it. No, just look if you watch this podcast, you know, you know that I don't invest in 
<laughs> and you probably have seen the sweater on, you know, at least 20 episodes. Which so. is not an inexpensive sweater. No, I just love the so sweater, you know. So. <laughs> yes. Um, but just look nice. The way that you would, the way that you show up for a meeting with a client, if you were meeting with them in person, you probably wouldn't wear your pajamas. You probably wear a nice, you know, a, a whatever, whatever business casual means to you. And again, you don't have to worry about pants because it's, it's, a, if you're cold, maybe wear some, but, um, but you don't have to worry about that, but just put your best foot forward is really what it comes down to, to how you look on camera, put your best foot forward and be in an environment that lets you focus. Like Kate said, you probably don't want to be on your bed because then you're just quite frankly, you're, rec- you're reclined, you're leaning back. Or if you have yeah, to be ergonomically uh, sound, really. Yes, exactly. Or if you have to be too, don't forget that you you can be honest with your clients. You can say, by the way, I apologize. I do not normally take calls from my bedroom, but um, this week my child is homesick and they're in the they're in the living room, and I want to make sure that you get my full attention. So I'm kind of holding up here in in the bedroom, just so you know. And I don't can't think of a reasonable client in the world who wouldn't say, "Oh my gosh, yes, we totally get it." But if there's something, if there's something different, you can just say they're humans. Clients are human too. You can just say that to them, you know. Mm-hmm. And as we're talking about, you know, it, just the p- posture and positioning on the bed, our operations manager, Caitlin, actually had someone come into her home to look at her office setup to be more ergonomically correct, if you will. Um, and so that might be something if you're if you get lots of back pain or you just find yourself in pain from working from home all day, which mm-hmm. I, I get it. Uh, you might that might be valuable to you to have someone kind of tell you, here's maybe a great office chair that that would work for you or here's you know a, a wrist pad or all the other things that I don't have any of that so I cannot give good examples but it might be something that you look into of I, okay I have joint pain I need I need this item in order to be sitting at a desk all day and taking care of not just my client work but taking care of myself to being kind of hunched up all day mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so exactly. there are lots of of tools I guess uh, to help with posture and comfort and and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now that's kind of essential stuff. Are, is there additional stuff that you can get yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can get yourself a nice desk. You can get yourself nice desk clamps. You can get yourself the background that you, that if you, if you have an office or you have a space and you want to decorate it, go for it. Absolutely. However, don't buy this stuff before you have client income coming in. I know like, it's just like I was saying at the beginning, it can be very tempting to be like, well, if I have a desk, I'm going to, a desk I really like, not just this old desk, but a new desk. We have a new desk that I really like. Oh, and a new chair. And then oh, I'm the, uh, the lamps too. When I have that, I'm going to feel more professional. And when I feel more professional, it's going to be um, easier for me to send out pitches or it's going to be easier. No, my friends, no, you, you are... And I say this because that's the kind of thing that I bet there's absolutely the things that I have thought to myself in in various different arenas um, because I want to buy stuff. And I got that. I want to buy stuff. And now I have a nice office. I have a chair. I have all the lamps. Um, But don't buy this stuff before you start earning money. And also too, as you start earning money from your clients, don't take all that money and throw it back into your office because it's not an investment is something that you purchase that it pays for itself. Like, like the comprehensive copywriting Academy, for example, you invest in the course. And then as you take the action, all you get, you land clients and it pays for itself uh, quite possibly, very likely thousands and thousands of times over even more tens of thousands yeah. potentially hundreds of thousands yeah. of times yeah absolutely yeah. potentially hundreds absolutely. of thousands of times over um but yes yeah over the course of your career absolutely but things like an office chair a desk a fax machine uh lit, all of that kind of thing those are not investments. They're not going to pay for themselves. You might enjoy them and they might make you feel better. Maybe it's a gift to yourself. Maybe that's part of celebration. Maybe there's a desk chair that you really want. And you think, all right, when I land my first client, I'm going to go ahead and get myself that desk chair as a, as a celebration. That's fine. That's great. But don't let, don't let yourself justify it as, as office equipment, 
not equipment, but office, uh, office accoutrement. Uh, accoutrement. I know that's the word of the day for some reason. Um, office decor, that kind of thing is not an investment. It's a purchase. And it's totally fine to make that purchase. But our uh, strong advice to you is don't make that purchase before you're making the income that will help you pay for that purchase. And maybe too, you figure out exactly, all right, I don't want all of my money from a client to go to making these purchases. So maybe I set aside a little, maybe I set aside 10% from each of each of my clients to go toward that new desk or to go toward what the general home office fund. Exactly. The general home office fund. And uh, don't don't go overboard. Um, well, no, I take it back. You know what? If you want to go overboard, great. Just make sure that you are making the money to pay for it. Don't buy all the stuff first, thinking that it's going to make you feel more professional. And then you'll do the stuff because that is 100% just resistance coming up. That is the takeaway is that it's it's do what you want, but no, go in knowing that you do not need much of anything to make a copywriting, uh, to make your copywriting home office functional. You mm-hmm. really, you don't, like we said, you don't even need an office. <laughs> you just need a surface. And frankly, you could do your whole copywriting career from a library, which has free internet, which has computers that you can borrow, which has all of those things. You you wouldn't even need to buy anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, and they might, uh, a lot of libraries have rooms that you can go to and shut the door for claws. So like yeah. there's, there's ways to make this work uh, with without spending anything, really. I mean, obviously, investing in training. And again, that's an investment, not a purchase. So there's few purchases that you have to make at all. And so just knowing that, that, okay, is this... Is this really going to do the thing that it's, you know, is buying the amazing, beautiful desk going to suddenly motivate me to write copy? No, it's it's <laughs> I bought a desk that I really liked. And guess what? I'm I'm kind of over it now. <laughs> it's lovely, it's functional, but it's not it guess what? It came and my uh, mm-hmm. productivity did not change at yeah. all. Yeah. The magic to get you to do things is not going to be coming from making up stuff. Yeah. It's just not. It's going to be from learning your motivation types, making commitments, reaching out for support from fellow students in the group, putting it on your schedule, all that kind of stuff. It's not going to come from stuff. However, go ahead and get the stuff once you are earning. Once you're earning, absolutely. Or if you've you won the lottery and you have a ton of spare cash, absolutely go wild. Sure. Go have the full, you sure. know, most of us, you know, have bills to pay though. And yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Just be wise, be wise mm-hmm. with what you purchase and know that it's resistance. And if you still buy it, just know, okay, I'm, I'm given into resistance. Okay. Mm-hmm. And try happens. to remind yourself yeah. next time, like, Ooh, I had this feeling before that buying the desk was going to be the key and the desk was not the key. So probably then it's not going to be the chairs or the magic desk lamp that are the key. So <laughs> learn from our mistakes, basically. Uh, and if you're a CCA student, uh, send us a photo of your home office into the the oh, Facebook yeah. group. I love seeing, I love getting inspired by how people, you know, sometimes you just need that fresh change of like, I'm going to shift the angle of my desk or I'm going to mm-hmm rearrange where the pens are on my desk, whatever it is. So it's, it's fun to look at people's yeah, home offices. So. And actually, uh, CCA students, you know, well, I mean, you see this background, but you know what our, what the part of my office looks like, because it's on the cover of our orientation guide. Yeah. This is where I'm sitting right now and what I'm looking at. Um, so yeah, I, I, I agree that send, send in, whether it's fabulous and glamorous, or whether it's like, this is the corner of the sofa that I work from and this so, is how I do it. As I say, I'm going to send, I will, I will commit to this. Uh, and CCA students told me to it if I don't do it. I will post my as is, not cleaned up, not, not photo ready. Because uh, that photo on the orientation guide, Nikki's office is beautiful. But like when she's there's, working, there's this there's, there's stuff. There's like stuff. we have to live. It has to be functional. And mm-hmm. I do think that can be, you know, going on Instagram, getting inspiration. It can be inspiring, but it can also be, oh my gosh, I have to have an Instagram worthy mm-hmm. setup. Yes. And, and you don't, and like none of that, it's not, 
at least for me, it's not realistic. I'm going to have coffee. I'm going to spill that coffee. I'm going to have papers. I'm going to have my notebook open. I'm going to have pens everywhere. I'm going to have it lived in. And then, yeah, is it organized? Mm-hmm. Is it organized chaos? Yes, but it's it's not. I don't have a succulent. Uh, maybe I should. There's no like. It's it's just not Instagram worthy by any mm-hmm. means. Mm-hmm. And, and you know that's what? That's okay. okay. Exactly. exactly. I'm it's, doing just fine. Exactly. I'm making income as a you know and. It's work. No one cares. Yeah. That's the key. It will get the work done. And that is the most important thing. Absolutely. So with that, we will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Like what you heard? Hit subscribe so you never miss a video. And if you're ready to take the first step toward becoming a copywriter yourself, sign up for a free video training right here.